The Seven Seals of Revelation The seven seals are fascinating and full of deep messages told in chapters 6 to 8 of Revelation. Each time Jesus Christ opens a seal, a divine judgment is passed. The first seal I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come, I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. This rider on the white horse is usually seen as a symbol of taking over lands or spreading religious teachings. The bow and crown show he has great power and control. White is often associated with purity and victory in biblical times. A white horse was a symbol of triumph and defeat. The white horse in the first seal can be seen as a powerful symbol of something or someone coming with significant impact. The bow represents the ability to conquer from a distance, suggesting a form of power that doesn't necessarily involve direct combat. The crown implies authority and kingship indicating that the writer has a form of ruling power together. These symbols portray a figure of great influence and dominion as of the writer. Some interpretations view the writer as a symbol of defeat, representing the spread of power or influence through military or other means. Another perspective sees the writer as a metaphor for the spread of the gospel. In this view, the white horse symbolizes the purity of the message, and the bow represents the far-reaching impact of the Word of God. There are debates among scholars whether this writer represents Christ as Christ is depicted as riding a white horse later in Revelation 19 verse 11, or whether it represents the Antichrist symbolizing deception and false peace. The opening of the first seal is seen at the beginning of end-time events marking the start of what is often referred to as the Tribulation Period. It sets the stage for the unfolding of further events, each represented by the subsequent seals. For believers, the first seal is a reminder of the unfolding of God's plan and the importance of being vigilant and faithful. It's seen as a call to understand the times and to be prepared for the challenges and changes that will come with them. The second seal, the second seal depicted in Revelation 6 verse 3 to 4, introduces a red horse. When the Lamb of God opened the second seal, another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other to him, was given a large sword. This represents war and bloodshed, a period where peace is stripped away, leading to conflict and destruction. This is a powerful symbol that dives deep into the theme of conflict and war. When this seal is opened as described in Revelation 6 verse 3 to 4, a red horse appears and its rider is granted the ability to remove peace from the earth leading to widespread violence and bloodshed, the red horse and its rider, represent a time of great wars, and fighting among people the color red itself is also associated with danger and violence, which fits the theme of this seal. The rider is said to have a large sword, meaning the upcoming battles will be in large scale and serious. The picture it paints isn't about small fights or arguments in one place, but about huge wars that will affect many people and countries, the opening of the second seal and the arrival of the red horse symbolize a period where peace is shattered and chaos reigns through warfare. It's a warning of a time when harmony and order are disrupted, leading to suffering and destruction on a global scale. The third seal, the black horse in Revelation 6 verse 5 to 6. The third seal reveals a black horse. I looked. And there before me was a black horse, its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages and six pounds of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. This vision is usually understood to symbolize a time of famine and economic hardship. The black color of the horse can represent sadness or tough times. The rider holding scales as a symbol of measuring and rationing food, which is something people might do when there isn't enough food to go around. Basic food will become very expensive. It will take a full day's pay to buy just a little bit of wheat or barley. This indicates a time when food is scarce and people have to work really hard just to get enough to eat. However, the command not to damage the oil and the wine suggests that while basic food will be scarce, some luxury items might still be available. This could mean that the econ-omic hardship won't affect everyone equally. Some people might still have access to more expensive goods, 
Overall, the third seal points to a period where getting enough food is hard for many people, and the difference between the rich and the poor becomes more. Noticeable the fourth seal. The fourth seal in the book of Revelation is about a pale horse and its rider named Death. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword famine and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Revelation 6 verse 7 to 8. This symbolizes a lot of death and disease causing many people to die in simple terms. This part of Reeve action talks about a time when a lot of people on earth will die. The pale horse is a symbol of death. The fact that the horse is pale, a color often associated with sickness and weakness, highlights the grim nature of this seal. The writer named Death represents the end of life. Following him is Hades, which in this context is like the grave or the place where the dead go. This seal suggests that a large part of the world will experience great suffering and loss of life. The ways people will die are listed as by war sword, not having enough food, famine, diseases, plague, and wild animals attacking wild beasts of the earth. This imagery is meant to portray a very difficult and tragic time on earth. The fifth seal, Revelation 6, verse 9 to 11, opens the fifth seal, revealing the souls of martyrs I saw under the altar. The souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. This seal shows how people who believe in their faith in God might suffer or even die for it, tells them to stay patient and keep believing, even when things get really tough. The fifth seal of Revelation found in the New Testament is a particularly moving and solemn part of the vision given to John. This seal represents a scene quite different from the first four seals. This means he sees the spirits of people who were killed because they believed in God's word and stood firm in their faith, even in the face of danger. These souls are crying out asking God how long it will be before he judges the people of the earth for the wrongs they have done and avenges their deaths. In response, each of them is given a white robe. The white robe is a symbol of purity and righteousness. It's like a reward for their faith and suffering. They are then told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants and brothers and sisters were to be killed as they had been. The sixth seal. Cosmic disturbances. The sixth seal. In Revelation 6, verse 12 to 17, brings chaos to the heavens. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red. This seal suggests great cosmic and natural upheavals, symbolizing divine judgment and the shaking of earthly powers. The sixth seal talks about huge changes and disasters in nature and the universe, showing God's power and how it can change things on earth. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake, Revelation 6 verse 12. This means there could be a huge and very damaging earthquake, showing a time of a lot of chaos and big changes on earth. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red. Revelation 6:12. This describes strange and frightening changes in the sky. The sun becomes dark and the moon appears red, which could symbolize significant disturbances in the natural world. The stars in the sky fell to earth. Revelation 6, verse 13. This part of the vision suggests a scene where it looks like stars are falling from the sky, adding to the chaos and fear. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up. Revelation 6, verse 14. This implies that the sky itself seems to be changing or disappearing, a sign of significant alterations in the world as people know it. Every mountain and island was removed from its place. Revelation 6, 14. This indicates extreme changes in the Earth's landscape, with mountains and islands shifting from their usual positions, the king of Earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hidden caves and among the rocks of the mountains. Revelation 6, verse 15. People from all walks of life, regardless of their status, are terrified and try to hide from these events. The sixth seal describes a time of great and scary changes on Earth. It talks about a big earthquake, weird chang -es in the sky, and people being afraid it's a symbol of big shifts and disturbances happening in the world according to the vision and revelation, the seventh seal silence in heaven. 
Finally, Revelation 8 verse 1 describes the seventh seal. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. The seventh seal introduces a brief, solemn pause before the onset of the seven trumpets, which further detail God's judgment. The seventh seal is a significant part of the biblical prophecy about the end of the world. The opening of the seventh seal marks a very important moment in the story of Revelation. It's like a dramatic pause, a moment of complete silence in heaven that lasts for about 30 minutes. This silence is significant because it comes after a series of dramatic, loud, and chaotic events. The opening of the first six seals which bring conquest, war, famine, death, and other disasters. The silence of the seventh seal can be seen as a moment of anticipation or preparation for what is coming next. It's like the calm before a storm in the story. This silence leads to the next series of events, the sounding of seven trumpets by angels, each trumpet bringing its own set of events and judgments on the earth. So the seventh seal is like a bridge in the story of Revelation. It's a quiet moment that marks the transition from the opening of the seals to the sounding of the trumpets, each part revealing more about the end times according to the Bible. The seven seals in the book of Revelation represent a series of prophetic visions given to John. Each unveiling different aspects of the end times, these seals serve as both warnings and revelations of what is to come, encouraging believers to remain faithful and steadfast in their faith, understanding the concept of seal in biblical context in the Bible. A seal often represents the authority of the one who issues it, it's like a signature or a stamp of approval, indicating that the message or decree it accompanies is not just any word, but one backed by the full power and credibility of its issuer. This idea is clearly shown in Esther 8 verse 8 in the Bible here. King Azur says to Queen Esther and Moray, You can write a letter for the Jews in my name and seal it with my ring once it's sealed with my ring. Nobody can change what it says. This means that the king's seal or stamp on the letter shows it has his full support and power behind it. Once the king has made a decision and sealed it, no one can undo it. Similarly, seals in the Bible also signify authenticity. They serve as a guarantee that the message or law is genuine, untouched, and unaltered. This concept is evident in Daniel 6 verse 17 where it's recorded, And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel the king's seal on the stone over Daniel's lion's den, was a declaration that the king's command regarding Daniel was authentic and should be executed as intended. Furthermore, seals in biblical times were used for protection. They were meant to safeguard the contents of what was sealed, whether it be a document, a decree, or as in the case of Daniel, a person's fate, the seal was a physical representation of safeguarding something valuable or significant, ensuring that it remained untouched and preserved until the appropriate time for its revelation or execution. Understanding the concept of seals in the Bible opens up a deeper appreciation of how God's authority, authenticity, and protection are manifested in His dealings with humanity. It's a reminder that what God decrees is backed by His sovereign power is genuine and true and is safeguarded until the fulfillment of His divine purposes.